Formula One is known for its speed, rivalries, and its racetracks around the world. But it's not known for banked corners. Corners such as these are synonymous with racing. They aren't too expensive to build, they give for faster racing, and fans love them. So why doesn't Formula One have more of them? After all, it's the most prestigious and popular motorsport in the world. Well, they actually did have them, back in Monza. Nope, not this Monza, this Monza. The old Monza track is famous for having 38 degrees of banking on its corners. And it's because of this that the FIA decided it was for the best to stop using the track. After many fatalities, people decided Banks Corners wasn't the way to move on. But again, in 2005, when F1 raced at the Indianapolis Speedway, which famously has challenging banking, especially for open-wheeled vehicles, only 6 out of 20 drivers started a race. It was, let's just say, not a very proud moment for Formula 1. What is the reaction of the crowd? Well, it's stunned. Stunned silence. What was supposed to be a marriage between the greatest track in the United States and the highest form of auto racing in the world was a brilliant idea on paper. But it turned out to be a public suicide mission. And for good reason. The other 14 drivers didn't even run due to safety concerns with their Michelin tires. You see, Michelin tires were susceptible to failing due to massive loads given by the banking. And together with an abrasive track resurfacing, the tires wouldn't last more than a few laps. As a result, F1 struggled to establish itself in the American market in the following decade. And that was the end of it. Until now. Stafford continues on his way and takes that high line around the banking at turn three. A slingshot on the exit. Stafford, as we watch Hamilton coming off the banking. F1 has the slowly been pushing for more and more tracks featuring banked corners. First with Zandport who is famous for having 18 degree banked corners in Hugenholtz and Ari Leindig. These corners are two times that of the banking at Indianapolis 20 years ago, but incredibly, it was not only safe, but it offered a great spectacle for fans in the grandstands. The flag, turn up to the max, listen to that roar! You see, whenever there is a banked corner, there are two routes the drivers can take. The tighter, shorter line with lower speed, or the longer line with higher speed. Let's jump on board with Max here. Now, there are two lines you could have taken. The normal racing line into the apex, as if it were a regular flat corner, or a wider but higher line. This is because the corner is shaped more like a bowl. The lower part of the corner isn't actually that steep. It's close to around a few degrees banking, while the steepest section is around 18 degrees. Max chose the latter. Now, because of the steeper banking, the cars naturally slow down and brake harder, and faster into the apex. They also get more downforce and obtain a faster minimum cornering speed due to the centripetal force provided by the slant of the track. These give more overtaking possibilities which we saw in action in Zandvoort over the past few years. Oh, this could be special, he loves turn 3 once again, Max Verstappen carves his... Saudi Arabia's Jeddah Corniche circuit also followed this offering a 13 degree banked corner on the track. Drivers and fans alike loved these additions and wanted more of these in Abu Dhabi, for example. And in 2026, the designers of the new Madrid street circuit are planning for potentially the steepest banked corner in the F1 calendar. But why is F1 so hesitant at creating more banked corners? Banked corners have become commonplace with racing because of speed and overtaking possibilities. Okay, picture a Formula 1 driver making a turn. They need a force to keep them on a track and not make them fly off. This is called the centripetal force. Without any banking, the centripetal force is 100% provided by the friction of Pirelli's tires, which means that it's only because of the friction of the tires that keep the car from flying off. So when you hear Lewis complaining about his tires wearing off, they're gonna lose this right in front of I can't look after the tires anymore. They're dead. It's because their tires go from this to this, and they simply have a tire with worse grip, which makes cornering much more harder. However, if you take that same corner and slant it, you get a banked corner. And in other motorsports like NASCAR or Indy 500, heck, even bicycling, this gives you more speed. Why? Since the car slanted, 
part of the centripetal force is now provided by the slant of the track, or if you want to get real fancy, the normal force. It keeps the car from sliding off, and this way, F1 cars can go faster, get more grip, and maintain more speed on the exit. So why doesn't Formula 1 have more of that? If fans love it, and it's great for racing, why don't more F1 tracks implement it? Well, it's because of one thing. Safety. You see, F1 actually has quite a few banked corners, but they aren't very steep, at least incomparable to those of, say, NASCAR, whose steepest corner at the Talladega track has banking of 33%. Compare that with F1, which has less than 20% banking. And the especially steep corners we see in Zandvoort and Saudi are mostly low to medium speed corners, meaning the drivers drive slower through those corners. For example, F1 drivers lift to around 4th gear in turn 13 of Jetta and turn 3 of Zandvoort instead of going flat out. F1 tires are just not designed to cope with the sustained forces that you normally go through in a high speed banked corner. This is also why in Zandvoort, Pirelli wanted to make a harder compound of tire just for the race. The load, coupled with F1's open wheel design, puts a lot of stress on the tires which of course aren't made to last a full race. And that's why if Formula 1 returned to the old Monza circuit with its 38 degree banking, which is more than two times out of Zandvoort's, the banked corner would be taken flat out and that would generate tremendous loads on the Pirelli F1 tires. It just wouldn't be safe for the driver nor the fans, especially when incidents such as these occur. Hamilton's gonna try again, this time on the inside, it comes to the touch! Verstappen is out of the race and that's a big crash into Cops! The FIA and the track engineers have safety on their priority list as they want to eliminate the possibility of catastrophic racing incidents. But more importantly, Formula 1 cars are machines that are designed to negotiate flat, tight corners without banking, due to their incredible amount of downforce keeping the car on track. The front wings we see in today's F1 cars are the most advanced ever, capable of generating enough downforce for the cars to negotiate any corner on the racetrack, banked or not. But there's no use denying that after years of boring old flat turns and off-camber turns, which actually is the opposite of banked corners, having banking in the opposite direction and the drivers for turning, seeing banked corners was a change for the better. Even Fernando Alonso voices approved for implementing more of these after seeing the success it received in Zandvoort. And he's not alone. People say that safety isn't always exciting. After all, some of the most famous and spectacular corners in F1 are known to be very challenging. Take Eau Rouge in Spa, for example. The thrill of the corner and witnessing the bravery required for the drivers to reach the top of the hill while pushing flat out, while not seeing what's in front, is what makes the corner so remarkable, but also very dangerous. After all, motorsports is still one of the more dangerous sports in the world. But banked corners don't always have to be dangerous, and hopefully, we'll get to see more of them in F1's future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.